Hello everyone, Maggie Higgins here from the St. John Arts Center. I'm an artist and an educator and every week I bring you a fun new art activity that you can do while you're staying safe at home. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about one of my favorite artists, Minnie Evans, and create a work inspired by her. Minnie Evans was considered an outsider artist, which means she taught herself how to draw and paint, and she was 43 years old when she started her art career. Her work has beautiful symmetry, amazing color, and they were all inspired by her own dreams and visions and unique to her mind. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create our own artworks that are completely unique to you, and we're going to use her sense of balance, symmetry, and color while we make our own artwork. So if you're ready to get started and learn a little bit about Minnie and make your own artwork, let's go. This is the final piece that I made today, and I think you'll have a lot of fun, just like I did, finding new techniques and symmetry and creating a really colorful artwork that's a reflection of you. I'm gonna go through some of the supplies we'll need for this project. The first thing we'll need is construction paper or color paper. Any kind you have will work. Scissors, we need to cut our paper, so a nice pair of scissors works. If you're not comfortable using scissors, maybe you could ask your parents. You can draw the shape for them and they can cut it for you. A glue stick. If you have liquid glue or tape, that'll work great too. As always, it's good to have a pencil to plan out what we're going to draw, and then a black pen for some definition and outline. Crayons. So what's really great about Minnie Evans is that she used all kinds of different materials and she loved using crayons and wax crayons in particular. So to honor her, we're gonna use the same ones today. But if you have pencil crayons, markers, pastels, whatever you have will work really nicely too. All right, let's get started. Okay, I get my white paper down and then I choose the first piece of colored paper and I fold that in half twice. I fold that in half twice, it's gonna create symmetry when we cut it. First I cut along the outside edge and I'm just kind of free forming it here. So I am not drawing it first, but you're certainly welcome to do that. And then I decide I want it to be uh, more of an, a frame shape. So I cut on the inside as well, and that'll create kind of a, a hole in the center. So this is what I end up with and I really like it. Remember, after you open it up, you can always edit it afterwards, but I'm gonna stick with this one. So I apply my glue stick to the back of this. Not too much, but an even spread. It's a good idea to get corners and edges. And I'm going to lay it on my white page so that it lays flat and balanced. And uh, this is a really nice base for what I'm going to be doing next, which is taking this pink piece of paper and I'm folding that in half twice as well. So half one way, half the other, kind of like a birthday card. And again, I'm gonna free form the shape I'm cutting here. I generally decide beforehand what I want. For this one, I wanted something like a flower or a cloud, but I wasn't too picky. And again, after you cut it, you can always fold it back up and cut it again. The folding, again, is for symmetry. And as you can see, it does a really quick and easy job of making sure that all sides are even. I'm gonna glue this onto the center as well. So I have a bit of the purple peeking out, but then I have a nice um, base to apply this piece of yellow paper. Doing the same thing again, folding in half and then half again. And I want smaller elements for this one. So what I'm going to be doing is creating these uh, organic inspired shapes. So they might look like seed pods, maybe they look like whale tails, but they're a bit more of a, a plant inspired shape, just like Minnie often used in her work. It's a good idea with your paper to go smaller and smaller each time you cut for your visual elements. But again, this is all experimentation. So try new things, try a few shapes. Maybe you don't use them, but you always, you have them to reference how you made them. So I'm gonna glue these onto the center and I really like how that looks. So next I'm gonna choose my blue piece of paper. It's gonna be my final element, folding in half and then half again. And again, I wanna use a plant inspired shape and I'm just freeform cutting it into a few different leaves. So it's like a branch of a tree. And what's great about this, like I said, you should experiment, see what shapes come out of uh, folding your paper and cutting it because it actually will surprise you quite a few times. Um, really cool things will happen, really unexpected things will happen. And I think that's the most valuable lesson is that sometimes it's not um, so important to plan everything through, but just 
try something new and you may discover um, a technique you really like. When I opened this up, I was really pleasantly surprised. I love this, uh, this cut piece of paper probably the most. It became my favorite. Uh, I was really um, intrigued by the shapes that came out after I unfolded it. And you probably will be too with whatever you decide to cut. So I'm gonna glue this onto the center and this I think creates a really nice balance and I have decided I am done with my cutting my paper. So four pieces of paper and I am done for now. I'm gonna go into coloring this piece of paper with my crayons. So I have decided to do one color uh, off from the piece of paper I'm coloring. So one more intense color. So I am using orange on my yellow and I'm using a darker blue on my lighter blue. And all I'm doing, and you can experiment with, with different ways of coloring in, but what I've decided to do is just color in kind of the centers and the edges. And I think that creates a really interesting look. I think it makes it look quite organic um, and quite varied. It almost looks like they're around it, it gives some dimension, meaning that it looks almost 3D. And so what I've decided to do now, I thought, you know what, I actually want to cut some more paper and create an interesting um, kind of shape in the center because I think the center needs a, what's called a focal point or kind of a focus point. And so I cut this little piece of paper and I'm gluing it on there now. And I'm going to go in and start drawing uh, little symbols and elements, a lot like how uh, Minnie Evans did in her artwork. And she had drawings, symbols, facial features. I've decided to draw eyeballs in mine. So the reason I decided to draw eyeballs is because when we're making artwork like this, it comes out of what we've been thinking about lately, right? It's an experience for us to kind of get out all of the ideas and, and process the ideas that have been in our minds lately. That's a great part of art. It's a good way to exercise those thoughts out. And I've been thinking a lot lately about ways of seeing, ways of viewing the world and taking on other people's perspectives. And so I know that might sound a, a little funny when you're, I'm just drawing eyeballs, but it actually is a way to express those feelings. So if I'm thinking about how can I start seeing from other people's viewpoints more, I am going to express that on the page by drawing many eyeballs on many different facets of this piece of art. Uh, I've done this uh, by planning out with my pencil first and then going in with my pen and filling in the eyeball elements, creating some visual impact. Again, the pen is good for just creating a nice definition and some detail. I wanted to keep the sense of balance in the symbols I was drawing. So as you can see, I've made sure that they are all equal, symmetrical. So I have one on either side, two on the top, two on the bottom, and then one in the center. And I've colored the center eye blue. I'm gonna go in and color the outside eyes with pink to put in some more color and more dimension. I am all done. So here it is, and I'm really happy. This is the first time I've ever made a piece of artwork like this, so I'm gonna experiment more and more, and it's gonna change every time. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna support the St. John Art Center, please leave a donation by visiting our website, sjartcenter.ca slash donate. I hope you enjoyed learning about Minnie, making your own artwork, and I will see you next week for a new fun art activity that we can do together. Bye.